Right, round two of engines explained. The first one about inline engines did pretty well, and I was and still am proud of that video. It took me fucking ages to make, but it was worth it at the end. So, here is episode two of engines explained. Like in the last video, I will be looking at these engines under how they work, their balance and smoothness, and their pros and cons, which will be a kind of summary. I will be talking about V6 and V8 engines in this video, but if you guys want me to go over some more V-styled engines like V10, V12, or maybe aircraft engines, I mean, those are pretty sick, tell me in the comments below. But for now, let's start off with a bit of history and how they work. V-styled engines have the cylinders and pistons aligned in two separate planes or banks so that they appear to be in a V when viewed along the axis of the crankshaft. The V configuration generally reduces the overall engine length, height and weight compared to the equivalent inline configuration of the same amount of cylinders. This effect increases with the number of cylinders in the engine. There might be no noticeable difference in overall size between V-twin and straight twin engines while V-8 engines are much more compact than straight 8 engines. The first V-engine was invented by Gott... Gott... Gottli... Gottli... Daimler and Wil Wilhelm Maybach in 1888. It was the first time that it was actually possible to give a measure for the angle between the cylinders. In this case, it was just 17 degrees. The engine had 1050 cc's and managed 4 brake horsepower. I mean, that's just amazing, isn't it? <laughs> the first V-type engine, a two-cylinder V-twin, was built in 1889. By 1903, V-8 engines were being produced for motorboat racing by the Societe Antoinette, building on experience gained with inline four-cylinder engines. In 1904, the Putney Motor Works completed a new V12 150 brake horsepower 18.4 litre engine, the first V12 engine produced for any purpose. This one was manufactured for two Russian brothers, making a dirigible. They ran out of money and Commander May bought it on sale or return basis for motorboat racing, having some moderate success in 1908. The engine was exposed and the hot coil ignition created misfiring on becoming wet with the spray. Robert Bosch supplied the very first magnetos and the problem was solved. Certain types of V engine have been built as inverted engines, most commonly for aircraft. Advantages include better visibility in a single engine airplane, higher thrust line and resultant increased ground clearance for the propeller. Examples include the British de Havilland Gypsy Major, German Daimler Benz DB601 and American Ranger L440 piston engines. So now that we have an understanding of where they come from and why they can be quite good, let's talk about V6 and V8 engines. Let's start with the V6 first and we'll save the best for last. A V6 engine is a six cylinder piston engine where the cylinders share a common crankshaft and are arranged in a V configuration. It is the second most common engine configuration in modern cars after the N-line 4. The V6, like the inline 4, is quite compact still, thus making it popular to front wheel drive layouts and is becoming more popular as car weights increase. The first V6 prototype engine was produced in 1906, however it took until 1950 for the first automotive V6 engine to reach production. In the past 20 to 30 years the V6 layout has become the most common layout for 6 cylinder automotive engines. Common firing orders of a V6 engine are 1, 2, 3, 
16.3456 or 16.5432. And by the way, for the first firing order of 123456, the cylinders are opposite each other, so it's not like one side all detonates and then the other side does so. Now let's talk about the cylinder bank angles, basically how much of a V there is in an engine when it comes to V engines. I will talk about the two most common angles which are 60 degrees and 90 degrees. A V angle of 60 degrees is the optimal configuration for V6 engines regarding engine balance. When individual crank pins are used for each cylinder, so basically a sixth throw crankshaft in this case, an even firing order interval of 120 degrees can be used. This firing interval is a multiple of the 60 degree V angle. Therefore, the combustion forces can be balanced through use of the appropriate firing order. The inline 3 engine that forms each cylinder bank, however, produces unbalanced rotating and reciprocal forces. These forces remain unbalanced in all V6 engines, often leading to the use of balancing shafts to reduce the vibration. And for the 90 degree, Many manufacturers, particularly American ones, built V6 engines with a V angle of 90 degrees based on their existing 90 degree V8 engines. Such configurations were easy to design by literally removing two cylinders and replacing the V8 engine's four throw crankshaft with a three throw crankshaft. This reduced design costs allowed the new V6 to share components with the V8 engine and sometimes allowed manufacturers to build the V6 and V8 engines on the same production line. The downsides of a 90 degree design are a wider engine because of it reaching further from each side as it's not as tightly packed. This engine design is more prone to vibration than a 60 degree V6 design. The initial 90 degree V6 engines such as the Buick Fireball V6 engine had three shared crank pins arranged at 120 degrees from each other due to their origins from the V8 engines. This resulted in an uneven firing order with half of the cylinders using a firing interval of 90 degrees and the other half using an interval of 150 degrees. The uneven firing intervals resulted in rough running engines with unpleasant harmonic vibrations at certain engine speeds. Right, let's move on to their balance of smoothness. All V6 engines, regardless of the V angle between the cylinder banks, are subject to a primary imbalance caused by each bank consisting of an inline 3 engine due to the odd number of cylinders in each bank. Straight 6 engines and flat 6 engines do not experience this imbalance. To reduce the vibrations caused by this imbalance, some V6 engines use counterweights on the crankshaft and or a counter-rotating balance shaft. And now, the pros and cons of a V6. So let's start off with the pros first. V6s can be mounted transversely or longitudinally with relative ease compared to inline and flat engines. V6 engines can make more power naturally aspirated because they are more balanced over inline 4 engines. V6s can be easily made for cars with any driving wheel layout. They can be shorter than inline engines. In other words, it can be more compact than an inline engine. Depends on the layout and the styling of it, so yeah, that's kind of a 50-50. The horsepower gain from a V6 to a V8 is minimal. And the last one is a V6 frequently offers better handling than a V8 because of it weighing less. Now, for the cons. V6s are more complex because you need two of everything, unlike for an inline engine. The cost of these engines can go up because again, they literally need twice as many parts as inline engines. They can be taller than a flat engine, but are most definitely wider. And the last one is, it is smooth, however, it would be cheaper to make an inline 6, which is perfectly balanced in every way. Therefore, I would pick an inline 6 for comfort over a V6. <sighs> That took a lot longer than I expected it to take. Anyway, we are halfway there, so let's continue. Now, V8 engines. So let's start off with how they work. I will be looking at the design mostly, but of course we need a short history lesson before everything else, because we apparently can't live without history lessons in this video. The first known V8 engine was the Antoine engine, designed by Leon Lavavasseur, I think, which was first built in 1904. The Antoine was built in France for use in speedboat racing and airplanes. A 1905 version of the Antoine engine produced 50 horsepower with 86 kilograms of weight, including cooling water. 
resulting in a power to weight ratio that was not surpassed for 25 years. Also in 1904, V8 engines began small-scale production by Renault and Bouchette for use in airplanes and racing cars. In 1905, the first V8 engine used in a road-going car was the Rolls-Royce V8 built in the United Kingdom. This model was initially produced with a 3.5 liter V8 engine. However, only three cars were produced before Rolls-Royce reverted to using straight six engines. In 1907, the Hewitt Touring Car, I think that's how you pronounce it, became the first car built in the United States with a V8 engine. The 1910 De Dion Bouton, built in France, is considered to be the first V8 engine produced in significant quantities. So, let's look at the V-angle. The majority of V8 engines use a V angle of 90 degrees. This angle results in good engine balance, which results in low vibrations. However, the downside is a larger width than a V8 engine that use a smaller V angle. V engines with a 60 degree V angle were used in 1996 to 1999 for Taurus single overhead cam, the 2005 to 2011 Volvo XC90, and the 2006 to 2009 Volvo S80, just to name a few. To reduce the vibrations caused by the unbalanced 60 degree V angle, the Volvo engine used a balance shaft and offset split crank pins. The Rolls Royce Meteorite tank engine also used a 60 degree V angle since it was derived from the 60 degree Rolls Royce Merlin V12 engine. Other V angles have been used occasionally. The Lancia Tricapa, Lancia de Lambda, and the Lancia Astrea, produced 1922 to 1939, used narrow angle V8 engines based on the Lancia V4 engine with angles of 14 to 24 degrees. And now let's look at their balance and smoothness. So, even though we are in the balance and smoothness section of this video, I will be talking a bit about design still because there's a huge impact to the smoothness of any engine really as to how smooth they will become. The same goes for the balance of an engine. So let's look at the crankshaft configuration for V8 engines, of which I'll look at cross-plane crankshafts and flat-plane crankshafts. Let's look at the cross-plane crankshafts first. So, what is a cross-plane crankshaft? Well, the cross-plane crankshaft is a crankshaft design for piston engines with a 90 degree angle between the crank throws. The cross-plane crankshaft is the most popular configuration used in V8 road cars. The cross-plane crankshaft has the four crank pins numbered from the front at angles of 0, 90, 180 and 270 degrees, which results in a cross shape for the crankshaft when it is viewed from one end. The iconic rumbling exhaust sound produced by a typical cross-plane V8 engine is partially due to the uneven firing order within each of the two banks of four cylinders. When separate exhaust systems are used for each bank of cylinders, this uneven pulsing results in the rumbling sound that is typically associated associated with V8 engines. However, racing engines seek to avoid these uneven exhaust pressure pulses in order to maximize the power output. To link the exhaust systems together, some racing engines either used one long primary exhaust pipe, like in the Ford GT40, or they would locate the exhaust ports on the inside of the V angle, like in the Lotus 38 IndyCar. And now that we understand that, let's look at flat plane crankshafts. This design is used by many V8 engines fitted to racing cars. This configuration method provides two small but still substantial benefits. The first thing is that mechanically the crankshafts can be machined from a flat billet and does not require counterweights so it is lighter. However, one huge drawback of this is that it produces more vibration due to a secondary imbalance. The second thing is from the gas dynamics aspect. The flat plane crankshaft allows for even exhaust gas pulsing to be achieved with a simple exhaust system. Several production sports cars have used flat plane V8 engines, such as every Ferrari V8 model. From the 1973 Ferrari 308 GT4 to the 2019 present Ferrari F8 Tributo, the Lotus Esprit V8, the Porsche 918 Spyder and the McLaren MP4-12C. And finally, for the pros and cons. And yes, these will be similar as they are very similar layouts, but obviously still different. So, some pros first. It is very smooth. It is definitely more compact than an inline eight. I mean, that's just a fact. It is the happy medium in size when it comes to power and performance, and it has good balance. However, this is very dependent on the design of the engine itself. And now let's look at some cons. 
like a V6, the V8 engine's weight can be high. It does need twice the amount of parts than an N98 engine, just like a V6. And the packaging is large, typically restricted to real wheel drive or all wheel drive vehicles. There are some examples of front wheel drive V8 cars, like the Cadillac DeVille which came with the North Star V8 engine. However, that is questionable how reliable that V8 engine was. And we all know it was terribly unreliable. So that's it. We have finally come to the end. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and tell me what I might have missed or if I should have added something. Make sure to like the video if you've enjoyed it and consider subscribing and I'll see you at the next one.